on what our, each of our roles are in case of an emergency. So in terms of communication devices, me and Allison both have radios. Apart from communication, we need someone to be taking care of the injured person, and that's usually going to be the person that has the highest qualification. When Mari comes back, it'll be her, mm -hmm. but right now I believe it is you. Jake has a woofer, um, so you today will be first medical. I'm guessing you sharpened hand tools before. Not a lot, actually. It was mainly chainsaw work I did. Okay. So the one thing that I always like to tell people is you sharpen into the tool. So sharpening kind of towards the back of like the hammer rather than sharpening out this way. I usually try to do like a full swipe all the way across the blade rather than concentrating, you know, on one specific area. Also taking note right now of the shape of your ax. So how like where the toe of it sits and where the heel of it sits. So mine are kind of like directly above and below each other, but then there's like this curve. It's heavy. Bucking saws really, they need to be heavy. And they usually are heavy. Bucking saw is the same width all along it, so we call it a ribbon style felling saw. Whereas that's just called a felling saw. But now and then some people call that a hybrid or a combination saw and they say this is a felling saw. People don't always agree on the terminology on this stuff. And then the curriculum tries to generalize a little too much by saying things like felling saws always have one hole at the end. So there's another thing about the shape, and I know somebody was talking about it here. The grind. The grind. Yeah, yeah. The best saws were concentric taper ground. And I think it, it's pretty obvious on Hella. So you want it to go through the curve easily. Look how thick the metal is up here. Then look at the back, how much thinner it is. And it's concentric taper ground. So all the teeth are the same thickness in this arc. And then if you drew a line an inch back from the base of all the teeth, drew that line following that same arc, that would all be the same thickness. Think of the leverage your hands have on the saw with this handle versus this handle. A lot better. If you've got it mounted in the upper hole, you've got more aggressiveness. Because the higher up your hands are on here, the more you're kind of driving the teeth into the wood, whereas down here you're kind of pushing across instead. You never know if the ground's swollen here and 
root lift if it's just going to tip over. Yeah, who's got a single bit to come whack on this thing? I'm ready to whack it. Go whack them. Whack. people who like to clear sort of an ADA compliant path of the escape route. <laughs> and, um, I think people should do whatever makes them feel safe. I'm not knocking that, but what makes me feel safest is if I've just walked this a couple times. Yeah. Maybe we'll take some time and clean up our area and our escape routes. Let's look at else, our lay. Well, right. If you're generally looking and your feet are pointed at your lay, you should be kind of on target. Let's just air saw get a feel for it. So, does that feel good? That'll pretty much be how we cut. What you've got. I'm aiming for here, but it'll take adjustment and gunning with the saw to really determine exactly how far it will go. Okay, let's let's spin the saw around. Put it back in the tree. You can use the handle. I kind of like just set the saw down. Yeah, you can. The further back you go, also helps kind of gun that. It's a little shallow. So why don't we both go two fingers, basically to kind of skip the drawing step constantly. We'll communicate via fingers so if in this case I'll be like you know we're, we're gunning straight on let's both go two more fingers so we both go in equal distance but you of course have to find out whether the fingers are the same because gloves are different stump shot I think I only want to go about an inch up so like a finger up mm -hmm. um and then hinge with, if I do about a finger and a half.
looks like this tree grew out and around like this other one in that there might actually be like the tree I'm, I'm curious what this the hinge is gonna look like if there's like mm. gonna be a knot or oh, another yeah. tree in the hinge because of that thing mm -hmm. three. three two two all right i'll take my hand off it's going it's going okay Yeah, it's weird. It has this heartwood and that one over there. Yeah. So it's like this was the second tree and then the top of it was just like way smaller. Wow. There's that bark. Yep. Which was in the freaking hinge, of course. <laughs> that was a really nice stump shot. Yeah, it looks good. I'm happy with it. Milady. Ooh, honey crunch double dipped. It's corn dog time. My Junko, Junko got a corn dog too. Nice. She's like, I also got a BLT in case I don't like the corn dog. I was like, you're smart. The guy who doesn't. How could you not like the corn dog? Well, because like the dude who worked here last year always made them the best. But, you know, maybe they're messing something up in there. You never know. True. Oh, it still hits. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh my god. When the weenie slides down your gullet for the first time. <laughs> texture of hot dogs. How would you describe the texture of a hot dog? I'd rather not go there. Like biting through a, like a Tempur-Pedic foam mattress kind of. But no. like, good. Mm. Oh, ASMR. I feel like I can hear Kyle's voice. Where is he? Hello? Wilderness Fuels Module Assemble! <laughs> <laughs> I'm making fancy little quesadillas. Mm. That's very smart. Flip your quesadilla with the big knife. 
<laughs> it's really safe. <laughs> Like a quesadilla taco. Nice. That looks good. Mm. Mm. We finally moved into the ranger station. I'm so happy to be somewhere for a while. I've kind of needed it. It's good to feel like I can put roots down. There's still a bunch of, well, there probably should be more snow up here, but there's still a decent amount of snow and um, we'll be having snowball fights until it melts. So that's fun. I'm walking down to the lake right now. I haven't gone down to it. We kind of drove past it today when we were doing some saw stuff and taking the trailer up to our work site, but I want to go see how cold the water is. It's probably freezing it's probably so cold but we got our wetsuit this summer oh I love this campground it's like a really old campground from it was established in like the 1930s maybe even before that and so it's not to code what you would allow today for a campsite because it's in like a huge meadow area which is extremely sensitive environmentally but since it was it predates all of the laws and stuff that changed it it's allowed to exist and so there's all the campgrounds and everything are just like in meadows and it's really beautiful look it's also a really primitive campsite there's no running water here and the toilets are pretty primitive so it's nice because it gets a little bit less traffic even though because of COVID last year. I mean, it was crazy up here. It was the most people I've ever seen come up to the park through this road because this road isn't the main road where all the like beautiful vistas and attractions are directly from the road. So people kind of have to like want to come up here um, and see something up here. But I love Juniper Lake. I'm really excited to swim and find like deeper spots this summer because it is kind of shallow. It only hits like the furthest out me and Martha swam last summer. It hit like 20 feet, maybe a little bit more. I want to try to find some deep spots. Oh my gosh. But yeah, look this at this. It's so lush and green. And there's Mount Lassen. I love her. Yeah, this spot out here where this little line is, like, that's usually all the way filled up with water. 